Okay, everybody. We are live here at the Pump Day Recreation Shot Sweeper. Uh, first match is going to get us with Chad Morris versus Shane Kennedy. Uh, they had pretty decent scores tonight. Um, I'm going to have Brad Bridges in the booth with me tonight. Hello, Brad. Hello, everyone. Glad to be with you, Kyle. Uh, the top five, the winner of this match is going to go against Rick McCormick, who uh, shot 299 his final game to work his way into third. Second tonight is going to be Tim Kobe, and our leader is Kyle Cook. Um, we switched this up from doing just a regular house shot. And we put out different recreation patterns each week, and the scores have actually gotten a little more manageable. Um, again, I got Brad Bridges here in the booth. He cashed tonight. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, threw it a little bit better tonight. I had to keep up with the two guys on my pair. Well, yeah, you uh, had Rick and Kyle with yeah. you, didn't you? Kyle comes out of the gate and shoots 840 the first three, and then there's, I think she's 279 in the last game for 1121 for the four. And then Rick had 299 in the last game. Yeah, I shared the video. Yeah, none of the guys could strike when it mattered, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, eight, 842, and then and Rick's 299 was was worth sharing. I did not share Kyle's, but it was definitely worth sharing. Uh, yeah, I recorded two shots of Kyle's. His, uh, I think he four pinned for 299, and then when he was shooting 840s, his fill ball, he uh, 10 pinned, I believe. So I have two shots of him, not striking. Not striking. Got and it. Got a boy. Shot 11-21 for four. That's a lot of pins. <laughs> That's a lot. That is the most his career high for four. It's also his high three game set tonight too. He said. Yeah, he said his past career high was 8:35. So we'll get to him when we get to him. But we had a pretty nice crowd tonight. We had 40 bowlers, which is a pretty decent turnout for for what we're doing here. Um, this thing is still gaining a. Uh, Gain a little head of steam. We're getting more bowlers each week. I am going to ask everybody while we are here. Doug Moss. You seeing that? <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah, he cashed. He, he hasn't bowled since the last time he fell. So he's more than welcome to come out here. He could have rode down with me and Cook. He could have. But he didn't. He didn't. Hmm. Wonder why. We miss you, Doug. Uh, used, I don't know about we. <laughs> they go out to lunch with Doug last week with a few guys. We had a good time. All right. I've shared this around to several different pages. I'm going to ask you guys to do the same. It is available on Facebook on several different streams. It's also available on YouTube at TM Team Bowling Stream TV. Uh, take a look at it. Um, had the pleasure of doing a live stream this past weekend uh, up in Columbus at HP Lanes for the 10K, and all of a sudden we gained about four or 500 new followers or subscribers oh, awesome. on the page and had an incredible amount of uh, people watching. So um, I think last I looked with all the feeds that I collected, it's over 15,000 views already from this weekend. That's awesome. So I've, I've seen a bunch of them pop up on Facebook as far as your, cool. like, or Facebook, or sorry, your YouTube where the re-airs. I went back and watched a few of them or for some things I missed. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, But, folks, you can follow these. I, I go live every Wednesday. I go live every Sunday night. Uh, we go live on Sunday mornings uh, for the senior sweeper that I have this coming Sunday. And then we also have some lady sweepers during the day. So if you want to follow the TMT Bowling Stream TV, just hit subscribe. You can hit the little bell. It'll tell you when I go live, and you'll get a chance to – to watch whenever we are. We'd like to uh, to put some bowling out there for everybody to see. We've got a little action going on here. I haven't been paying much attention to it. I've been watching the comments here. Yeah, Shane's getting uh, Shane's getting 27, 29 pins. Yeah, Shane, everybody on my pair made it except for me. So Shane and then Rick and then you got Kyle, the leader. I brought my wireless Andrea. mic down here. Oh, she on here. I brought my wireless mic down here. We're going to have Rick on here in the next match. Cook, Cook did not want to get on here. He's afraid that uh, ball sponsorships might overhear him talking, so he decided it'd probably be best if he didn't get on the live mic. 
Well, oh, I see that. And Andrea. Andrea's comment is priceless. I, I, I have nothing. And Nathaniel Lee, thank you, sir. So, anyway, um, Shane's getting 29. Uh, Chad is zero. Tim Kobe does get some pins. He's up in the second seed. So we've got a good mix of bowlers here. We've got, uh, you know, three three scratch bowlers and two handicap bowlers. This is an 85% of 220 handicap base. And like I said, every Wednesday we bowl on a different uh, a different challenge pattern. and Or not, I'm sorry, not challenge pattern, a different recreation right. pattern. They were definitely pretty nice out there today. This pattern was tossed to me uh, while I was up in, in Columbus. I got a message from from our boy Jerry up in Dayton. He said, oh, hey, this Jerry pattern? this on Wednesday. And it's called Westgate House 2000-something. That's an older pattern, but I'm sure it's one that he wrote a while back. Or fine-tuned, because he's good at doing those things. Well, Jerry can make you some scoring patterns, that's for sure. So we've got uh, Shane Kennedy's got 55 in the fourth with his sticks. That puts him at 84. Chad's got 48 in the third with a strike up in the fourth. Uh, so, hello, Brig. So it, you said you brought this little cordless mic. Someone is going to wear it today. Yeah, huh? we've got uh, Rick McCormick up in the next match. I'm actually going to step off here in a minute and get him all set up here. So okay. well, fingers crossed everything goes okay. It should. Every time you show up in a live stream with me, I end up having to spend more money. <laughs> this one's not very expensive, I think. What? Well, what's very expensive to you? Um, I honestly would have to look. I don't know if this is. This might be a two hundred dollar piece. Hmm. But I mean, there are cheaper ones out there. But this one is a uh, well, road, which is pretty good. So. I probably would not want to get something just cheaper. I would probably want to do <laughs> exactly. It right. You get what you pay for when it comes yeah. to a lot of that. I mean, we built this this little system we got here, and it's uh, I think it's working out pretty fine for us. Um, but there's always times you can make it better. Oh, Shane, just let that one get away from him a little bit. I'm going to okay, step let's... off here. I'm going to go get Rick set up and okay. make sure we're all set to go. Be right all right. Back. <laughs> I will check eBay. Shane's one of the younger bowlers in town. Uh, his father, Ken. Um, I remember Shane coming up, just coming up and watching Ken bowl uh, some of these tournaments. Oh, there's Ken comment too. I will, buddy. Um, and he started bowling, you know, some leagues here a couple of years ago, and he's progressing rather quickly. So, um, and he's he's here. He's a great supporter of the of the tournaments, not just here, just uh, wherever. He, he likes to get out and bowl, and he, uh, I think he might have overcorrected from from that last shot where he missed it to the right, and that one he cut it short. And ball went Brooklyn. He was a little concerned with that. See the look on his face. He didn't think he was going to make that. But covers up the spare. Puts him at 102 in the fifth. Chad Morris is chipping away at that deficit. Um, again, I'm going to ask everybody, just hit the share button. clicked over to check out YouTube. We got a handful of people watching on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much for the compliment there, sir. And it was a pleasure to meet you up there in Columbus as well.
You can share the YouTube video as well, whoever's watching on there. I've got 16, 20 people watching on there. So feel free to share away. Chance goes up in the sixth. All right. Well, if you're over there, you're you're in control of the buttons too now. You hear me? Don't yell at you. No, hear me? trouble on lane number 20. That ball just sailed away from him and never made a move. Leaving the 1 2 6 10. If you remember here a couple weeks ago, Chad Morris ran the gauntlet. He was uh, the fifth seed coming in and ran all the way through the field to win. So He's a, uh, ooh, gave it a nice run there, just leaving the six pin standing with it. So I, I moved this. Is there something that turns it on? Here? These are all done this way. I mean, I built it on. But it should be on the line. Because it's, because every time you talk, well, it's off right now, but talk. Hello? So you can pull it out. Yeah. But we're not going to build it here when it says, because oh, no, it's, you can't it's, it's not switching to the, it's not going to switch here. All right, I'm back here. Let's hopefully this works. <laughs> All right, Shane opens up in the seventh. Does strike in the eighth. Here's a quick look at the score. Shane with his handicap, 127 in the seventh. Chad's got, uh, right now it's an even match. Chad throws a strike right here. He takes the lead. Gonna have a close finish here. Well. Right, Chad covers it up. We are all even, folks, through eight. Shane's going to make a little ball change here in the ninth to see if he can make a little run at it. Oh, big shot there to set up the 10th frame. Absolutely, slaps that head pin off the wall. Shane put a lot of pressure on here. If you can strike up, force Chad to get up and get them all. Scott walks over and hands me money for the two guys that are bowling right now. I guess they want some jackpot money, too. Ball change did not help him out. He went light, light, light the last three shots. Made, went to something a little more aggressive. Up creeps the 4 7 10. Catching up on some comments here. Yeah, I'm not watching too much right now. Oh, he made a run at it. We've got to thank our sponsors that we have uh, that sponsor us all year long with Bullify and Bullify and Ebonite Bowling. Um, in fact, tonight is the first night of uh, our new sweeper champion jersey. I forgot to count up and see which one was the winner. Oh, I saw those on there. Uh, yeah. Did you post that today? Yeah, did I did. Just, okay. I did yeah, see so those. Three different, the different options to choose from. 
Um, I take it green's a favorite color or color of money? Well, it's kind of the TMT <laughs> color to the logo and whatever. So, But if somebody sees that and they decide they want a different color, we can make it a different color. So, Hey, Doug Moss just shared it. He's been watching the whole time and finally shared it. Hi, Jonathan. All right, Shane finishes 162. Chad's just going to finish it up, make sure he can stay loose, be ready to take on Rick McCormick. If anybody gets a chance, go to my Facebook feed and look at Rick McCormick's 299 in this final game. That was pretty nasty. I got a video of it, too. Yeah, I, I went ahead and posted that one. Oh, Chad is going to go ahead and strike. So he's going to finish this up. Brad, you're going to stay with us here for a minute. I'll be. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to step away for just a quick moment. Uh, Chad will be taking on Rick McCormick. The, Rick's going to get two practice balls on each lane, and they'll go right into their match. So um, I'll be right back. Brad, you're in control. Sounds like a plan. Doug Moss, be nice. I can block him. I'll just get on your computer and block him. Easy enough. Jonathan, I'll relay that message to Todd when he gets back about your sweeper on Saturday. Rick will get, I believe he said, two shots in each lane here, so Rick's on his way down now. He's looking back at me because I had him mic'd up, and it's turned off right now. But Rick has elected to start an off lane. Good morning. Why'd you, choose, why'd you choose that lane, Rick? Huh? You're live. Where's mine? Oh, I'm live? Yeah. Uh, why won't I choose that lane? Because that lane hooks a bunch for me. <laughs> Where's mine? We only got one, Chad. <laughs> if you win this match, I'll put it on you for the next Chad, match. Chad, we can't share the mic. That's a little weird. <laughs> Welcome back, Todd. Hey, I'm back. Jonathan Cummings had a message in here. He wanted you to remind everybody it's cam Cancer Sweeper on Saturday, if you could. It is Saturday. Uh, got the flyer over there. Hold 
I'm going to run over there and grab a flyer so I can make sure. We'll get the flyer. We'll give everybody. It is the cancer sweeper that Jonathan's putting on Saturday. There is a max field of 72 bowlers. Uh oh, Amir Garrett's coming into the Reds game. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hope they're up by 15. It's seven to two. I don't that's know. Not if that's enough. Enough cushion. Oh, maybe he's not. I don't know. Maybe so, he's... so Rick. How much more is this pair hooking in your last pair? Do what? Now? How much more is this pair hooking in the last pair you were on? Um, I can't go again. I mean, for for me, probably like five on the right line. They're hooking a bunch. talking i'm not sure what he said hopefully the folks out at home can hear him yeah they, they should be able to okay so jonathan is his tournament june 12th um cost is only 60 bucks it's at super bowl bellwood handicap 80 percent is 210 with a 165 average cap if you do have 10 pins over you will be Forced to take it. It is on a modified house shot. Um, again, cost is 60 bucks. Format is bowl three games of qualifying, moving four pair. So the right after each game, after three games of fields, cut to the top 36, and that's based on a full field. Uh, format a repeat till we get the top four bowlers, and we're going to do two game total pinfall bracket match play, semifinals, and finals. So if anybody's interested, please contact Jonathan. This is for an uh, amazing cause. Uh, you can reach him at 859-781-1211 for questions or payment methods. Yeah, Monty, I knew your team tournament was coming up soon, so that's a, that's always a big event over there, too. Yeah, I've bowled in a lot of Monty's events over there. The uh, one in the Newcastle, I believe. Yes. Yes. We got quite a bit going on over here as well. Oop, channel oh, no channel mistake there. Off. Yep. We got the Cool Rain open here in about two weeks. Uh, with myself and Kyle Cook put on the Cool Rain open. Squads are on Friday night, all day Saturday, starting at 8.30 in the morning. Um, four different squads on Saturday. And uh, Sunday finals. Um, I believe it's $70 entry, $60 re-entry. And you can reach out to Kyle if you want to want shift. And But that's here at Corain Bowl on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of June. Oh, you're good. Look at this in the little carry issues now in this pair. And then uh, and then we roll into July. We got the, the holiday on the 4th of July, and then the next three weekends after that, we have our Steady Hand Painting Trio Tournament. Three straight weekends in July. Uh, oh, Good looking shot there. When was the last time you had a weekend off, Todd? I don't know. I mean, I took last weekend off and went and did a live stream at another yeah. bowling alley. And I'm sure you've put more time in that live stream than you have in eight years for a while. <laughs> and then, uh, well, and then we came back here and did and the that, yeah. live stream for the sweeper. But I'm sure you slept pretty good on Sunday night, I'm sure. I don't know how to sleep good. That's just silly talk. Look at that. Oh, look Roll at that. I want to turn on the mic here. Nice little carry there, Rick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> busy, busy is correct, Lauren. 
Okay, I was incorrect about Amir Garrett. Everybody watching or paying attention to the Reds game, take a deep breath. He's not pitching. <laughs> uh oh. Like Chad starting to get the ball pushed yeah, this, down the lane a little further. This pair him. looks a lot tighter than what we bowled on down lane. I think Chad's left two or three ten pins, and now the two four ten. And Rick's 10 pin on the right lane, also, I believe. Oh or was the left lane? Left lane. Chad battled hard to get back in that last match. I thought he would uh, come out smoking here, but he's, he's struggling here all of a sudden. Yeah, at this point, with that ball reaction, I think I'd be fishing in the bag for something else. Yep. We do have a mic on a bowler, Lauren. That was uh, brought down by Brad. He's going to force me to spend more money. <laughs> not forcing you to do anything, Todd. You Well, you're I right. Just, I just think you want to put the best product out there you can. Well, so you do. You, you do, just keep you adding, spend the money. adding toys. Because this setup you have here was not here a year ago. No. And I think I'm partial here. to blame for that. No, you're way more than partial <laughs> to blame for that. But I'm, I'm happy we've added to it. I'm happy oh, yeah. what we've got out Your here. quality is way better than it was before. Not that it was bad, but just the picture quality on you know for being streamed, the quality is so much better. The lighting here makes a big difference sure. that you have right above the bowlers. Remember, you got control of the ATEM. The, the third camera is down at the pin deck, so you can watch the ball going through the pins or, in that case. Oh, yeah, I forgot I got control of that. Yeah, you're in charge. I mean, uh, too you're worried the about that, the microphone here. You're the one that made me buy that, too, so. Or wait, informed me about that product. <laughs> oh. Oops, wrong one. Yep, two's on score, three is on. So double check that before I switched it. That's okay. We can check scores now, though. There you go. 97 in the fifth for Rick. Chad's 52 in the fourth. One strike up. Definitely the game's not over. Chad can get some things working here. On the stream here, Don says, Brad, yes, you are to blame. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Don. Hope you're getting feeling better. She is at home resting this evening. Hopefully resting. Oh, it slaps the 10 out. Is that a slap? Or is that, that a slap? slap. <laughs> Lauren, I saw you just ask what the scores were. Did you see him when he showed him up there, or do we got to show you again? Oh, Dawn's propped up in the recliner. That's perfect. Probably watching this on the big screen. Oh, he gets the light mixer. Monty Akram, that's a fantastic question. The next senior sweeper is this coming Sunday. Starts at 11 o'clock. Cost is $40. Check in anytime after 10. Scott and I will both be here this week. We will be live streaming the finals of that. Hey, there's Logan Dyer checking in from Great American Ballpark. Aren't you working, kid? <laughs> You're supposed to be watching people jump in seats instead of watching your phone, aren't you? Got a pretty good match going right now. Yeah, Chad's it's going to matter way back in. who can get the 10 out. Yep. Seems like it's the case here uh, every time I step in this uh, and talk to you about these championship matches. It's about who can quarter, carry the corner pins. Yep. Bonus pins. That was not fun. What are you seeing out there? Hmm? 
Pair's hooking a lot more than my last couple pairs. So I actually had to ball up to get it to smooth down a little bit because I feel like I'm throwing it through the front part of the lane and trying to smooth out the back end a little bit. Like Chad cut that one a little short. Monty, I think with your birthday next week that you should by all means come to bowl on Sunday. <laughs> Chad, he's usually a much better spare shooter than what he's showing right here. He just Solid four pin. I think he was pretty fortunate to leave only the solid four. The ball started way in. Again, the patterns that we're bowling on, uh, it's a different recreation pattern every week. And when I say recreation for the folks that need explanation, the recreation patterns are uh, basically just a house shot or some semblance of a house shot. Um, but we do make them a little different, try to keep the scores uh, manageable for most people, which I believe that we're going in the right track for that for sure. Um, again, we had Kyle just absolutely light him up tonight, but um, yep. after that, it was it was pretty even all the way up and down the field. Um, yeah, I'd like to see what when Kyle comes to this pair, how he's going to attack them. This pair does look like it's played a lot tighter down lane than what we had before. Yeah, from tenth to. Th fourth it was only 40 pins difference and there was uh, all the way down to 15th they were all within 40 pins of, of cashing so there was a there was a lot of folks that had a chance with big last games and a couple people had some some bad last games that, that took them out of cashing or making the show if you will so we get, Rick's going to wrap this up Chad's going to go ahead and finish here yeah Tough game here for Chad, but another excellent night. He's gonna walk out here with 125 for his effort. Yep. He won a little bit of jackpot money too. Pretty decent night for a $40 entry. Waiting in the wings. We're going to have Rick McCormick versus Tim Kobe. My wife. Tim's going to get two practice balls in each starting lanes. What do you see in that nice? They look really tight in that for you. Yeah, well, I think like I was talking to Kyle back there, and I think to the left they're tighter, but where I'm at they hook literally instantly. So I'm having to try to get my ball to go through the front and still have something to carry. It's definitely not what we bolt on. Earlier, it seems no, like. No, the last repairs were pretty sweet. Yeah, and they were pretty nice. Not...
And Brad, if, uh, if you knew you were coming down tonight, you could have just picked up Andrea's jury instead of making her drive well, all the way down. I thought about that after she said she already picked it up. Yeah. I wasn't 100% sure. Actually, there was a sweeper up in our hometown at uh, Polking yesterday. Yeah. And she had state cleans coming up, so it was probably easier for her to bowl that one and me bowl this one. Um, so she elected to bowl that one, and they were they were hard. It was one to one flat. And yeah, so they, that's they, all they were bad. hard. So. Yeah. So I told her not just she bowled well. She headed off to a slow start, but after that she bowled all right. And so just, you know, just don't get frustrated because they're going to be hard. So I think she's ready to go for state queen. I know she really wants to do well in that tournament. Well, best of luck to to Andrea up Hi, at Lauren. state queens and. Best of luck to to all the ladies going to compete. All right, Chad, have a good Tim night. Tim starts off with a strike. Well, not yet. Oh, never mind. That was his last practice ball. Scott's going to go up and cycle and make sure that it will not sweep away the spares. We tend to have an issue with that. On, let's see. Well, it was all for naught. It would have been just fine. But Scott, is this where I'm supposed to take the camera off him? That would be it. <laughs> <laughs> you can see we switched it up. Rick's going to have Tim start off on the left-hand lane. Tim Kobe is. Tim Kobe's one of our, uh, one of our. League bowlers here at Cole Rain bowls a couple different nights a week. Averages 201, 202 right in that neighborhood. Uh, again, this is based off 220, so Tim is getting 16 pins handicap uh, versus Rick. Tim will, Tim will pop off some big scores every now and then, so should be an interesting match. He was actually the winner of our handicap house tournament last year uh, when we had it, so... Guy knows how to bowl when he's got a little, a little pressure on him, so let's see how he does here tonight. Probably not start he was looking for. No. Andrea, that'd be great. Great, she's bowling, that means I'm not. I, I, don't, I don't bowl any tournaments if she bowls it because I can't even beat her. <laughs> All right, Tim cleans up that first frame. Maybe a little jitter there. Oh. That's a little different look there. He got that in the touch. <laughs> Held on to it a little bit, got it in, circled his hand around it, and back. <laughs> Another 10 pin. Yeah, I did hear a couple of folks say tonight the pin carry was pretty tough tonight. So maybe it's just this pattern that maybe creates a little angle, makes it a little tough, tougher to carry from time to time. So picks up the spare. Maybe the shape of it keeps the ball. From, you got to make sure the ball's. Slowing down to go through the pins. What are you doing over there, Brad? Uh, somehow I clicked off the screen here, so but we're good to go. We're all set. <laughs> A much better shot there by Tim. Scott's sitting here next to me. And he said Brad's got his command center going on. He's watching <laughs> it on his iPad. And... Yeah, Scott would usually be controlling the screens here, but I'm trying to make sure Rick's microphone's turned off while he's bowling. 
Trying to keep this rated PG. Oh, good break there. Yep, tripping out the four. We'll put this match pretty close to even right away. playing the right lane a little bit different. He's playing with a little loft. I think that was he, intentional that I time. think he said that lane actually hooks more for him if he gets it to the right, but he does have to get it through the pivot down lane. Uh-oh. Travel. I've seen a few of those missed here in the step ladder tonight. Hey, kids at home watching, make your spares. Spares are very important. Oh boy, got that one to the right quick. Checked up on him. Gary, we had 40 bowlers this evening, sir. All right, he's with 57 in the fourth, and Kobe's still working on a double after the open in the first, plus his 16. Rick's going to have to dig himself out of a little trouble here. That's right, Scott. Say it again. Scott Thomas. Boys and girls at home, make your spares. Okay. Oh, boy. Lane is hooking a little more because that ball that ball started rolling up a little sooner. It looks like they're starting to get a little cliff for him out there. Yep. He was fortunate enough to get the four out on that one, just leaving the nine. Covers it up easily. See if Rick has an answer here. He needs to needs to find a way to kick that corner pin out. Yeah, I need to find a way to run this one down. Well, there's that too. There he goes. Well, way to go, Rick. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting currently slaughtered in this match, but we're locked up 84, boys. I have to go back and listen to what he just said. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to rewatch <laughs> this one. Folks at home, tell us what he just said. Oh, look at that. that don't know. Rick Bowling in a PBA event shot 84 in a game. and That, my friends, is something he has never 
going to live down. And he bowled with um, some guy by the name of Jason Belmonte and Bill, Bill New, I believe. Yeah, yeah, they'll remember him for that. <laughs> I'm sure they sit around and talk. Hey, remember that kid that was bowling on our pair that shot 84 in the, I don't know, this Masters or U.S. Open? <laughs> oh, look at that. Tim's, uh, Tim's going to make this tough on him here. Yeah, after the open and the first, he's coming to play now. Yep. Scoreboard with handicap shows Tim Kobe with 124 through 5 with his handicap. Rick's at 77, so... Almost a 50 pin. Oh, wow. Looked like, looked like he made a move in. The ball went 58 feet. Yeah, never, never saw it. Need some help to get back in this match. Yeah. Well, that was a big move right there. Tim just needs to mark any one of these frames to lock him out. 84, huh? That's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's going to seal it up right there. And he's found a way to kick the 10 out now. Well, he takes him straight at it. He's able to get the ball to roll through the dry without overreacting. And, uh, and when they get really cliff like this, if the farther right you can get and play straighter, the better off you're going to be. It's hard to throw the ball away from a pocket. Yeah, and it, I mean the straighter you can go on, on anything on most yeah. patterns, but especially here at Colerain, the straighter you can go, the better you're going to carry. All right, Reds fans, Amir Garrett is now, now in again. the game. It's a five pin lead or five pin. Five five run lead for the Reds. All right. Tim takes the one. That's gonna put him at two ten. He's got two forty max. Rick just has a max of one ninety three, so we Definitely we'll see Tim Kobe and Kyle Cook in the finals. <laughs> oh, he missed it. Rick was waving a white flag in the air. <laughs> We were talking about a little sweeper up at Polking on Tuesdays. There's literally sweepers almost every night of the week between here and Dayton and Northern Kentucky. And and I know where I'm located at. Like we got Cincinnati. It's like you are only 40 minutes away. Then we have Marion has a sweeper. Polking has a sweeper. South has a sweeper. Capri has one on Wednesday night too. So there's literally almost every day there's something to ball. That's that's a good thing. It's good. I think all these little sweepers that are popping up. I think it's all because of you, because of the success you're having and the bowlers you get here. I don't know. Oh, I think so. I'm kind of looking forward to Sunday night. I'm kind of hoping we can really top out the field this coming Sunday. I'm looking at Love to see close to 100 bowlers this week. Um... 
got Rebel Metal Brewery as our sponsor. Got a couple new brews to try. There's a new uh, seltzer on draft in there. So we're going to... Any discussion when your next doubles tournament's going to be? You know, somebody brought that up to me the other night. And asked I was just thinking so. that the other day. It's, it's been a few months, it seems like, since you had a doubles. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you when the doubles tournaments come into play is usually when attendance is... Uh, when the attendance is a little low on the sweeper, which is certain times of year, beginning of football season is mm-hmm. always usually kind of tough. And I'll throw the doubles in. And they sell out every time, don't they? They do, or close to it anyway. Um, Andrea, thank you for that compliment. Um, so, yeah, we'll probably have to toss one in here pretty soon. We've got so many other tournaments coming up that are, you know, with the, the trio tournament and with uh, the Coleraine Open. Throwing a doubles in there on a Sunday night would just be yeah, a you, long, it's hard. Yeah, you can't day. do it, especially when you have a big, big event going on. Yeah, so it's, it makes it a little tougher in the summer because we stay busy with a lot of different things. But we'll, we'll definitely have one here before the season starts, um, if not a couple. So Tim Kobe finishes at 240, Rick 182. That's a good block. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> to see Tim Kobe versus Kyle Cook here in the finals. Kyle's going to get a couple practice balls on each of the starting lanes. Again, another nice showing by Rick McCormick. Earns himself eight points for the uh, for our point system here for this tournament. This is a point-based deal. It's a 12-week-long series on Wednesday night. Two on each lane. He's getting it. Uh, and you only need 12 points to be eligible for the final. So that being said, Brad, you earned three points tonight for where you finished. <laughs> three more than I thought I was going to earn. There you go. So That's three more than Doug Moss earned. It is. I, I am ahead of him in the points. All you got to do is show up to get one, <laughs> and he didn't even show up to get one. So... Uh, Curious yeah, see how Cook's going to do with this. Like I said, he he whacked him for four games earlier, but this pair looks a lot dif- more difficult than what we bowled on earlier. Kyle Cook, Kyle Cook, Rick McCormick in the booth here with me. Well, Rick, you look like you had a little struggle that last game. Yeah. I, uh, hopefully you all can hear me. But uh, the last three games, I was kind of upset with myself, and I was trying to do what Kyle was doing, and that's just not my cup of tea. So I moved right and kind of jammed them like I did the step ladder. I had like 8-10 the back three. So I come over to this pair, and it's hooking substantially earlier. So I got fortunate enough to beat Chad. And then I tried to fight it the last game too, but then when I moved in, they were, I threw like three out of the last four or something like that. So, that should be fun. Yeah, he's got, he's got a little more uh, rev rate than you do. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he kind of rolls a little bit more, so hopefully he can get yeah, a lot of through the pins. Yeah, he's way. more up the back, so when it sees that friction, it doesn't jerk off of it. It's kind of nice and rolly. So, it's just a matter of getting the pins, the corner pins out for him. Yeah, it was fun to watch you guys bowl, especially the he shot 840 the, for the first three. You said you just had 8, 8 10 for the last yeah. three. Yeah, you had 8 10 for the last three. Mm-hmm. Well, that earned you two extra points in the, not for the City Cup. Oh, that's what I care this. about. <laughs> it will earn you three, one more point in the City Cup, though. He has had that look all day. This one more. All right. Again, Tim Cody's going to get 16 pins. Kyle Cooks, zero. Is my mic on? Hold on. I'll look it up for you. Here we go. Kyle has elected to have Tim start on the left wing. 
probably the tougher lane of the two. I don't know. I don't know if Rick, you can hear me over there. If the mm -hmm. left lane is a little bit tougher of the two, it looks like uh, it's hooking a little more. See, I actually thought that lane was easier. To be yeah. with you. But I was also playing a lot straighter, so. Oh, if I still break the start. Yeah, definitely good break. Pushes out the four seven ten. Mm -hmm. I actually thought his ball I actually thought he was gonna throw urethane the entire time, and then he went high, and he made a good decision on his part and switched to reactive and beat me up. <laughs> I didn't know he had a urethane ball down there. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, it's a he black went widow a couple urethane. Couple years and never threw anything but urethane. And yeah, finally yeah. someone told him. Oh, look at that. So we've been watching it all day, haven't we, Rick? <laughs> yes. He has these off hits that I flat 10, and I'm pretty sure you flat 10 too, and it's just, <laughs> it goes to the pin so hard. He had, he was, he was 320 over for four games with an open in the 10th. Whoops. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but I am happy to say that I did beat him one game. He shot 279 in the last game and lost. Sucks to be Kyle, but he's going up on his second frame right now. It's pretty good. Oh, appears like he's using a Prince like Hero solid, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the same ball you used all night? Yeah. Yeah, he's used it all night. Yeah. I saw him down there practicing those jibber jabbing the one. He looked like he was throwing like an obsession poor web MB too, but this hero solid is the money ball right now for him. I thought that sec I thought that shot was pretty good off his hand, but it does on that lane it does go a little bit longer and more forward off the spot, if that makes sense. So that's why I wrapped 10 a couple times on it. But he's doing alright. I do like his jersey though. Pittsburgh Penguins. Anybody who's fans out there. It's got those Pittsburgh colors on it though. Yeah, well I'm not a big Pittsburgh fan, but Steelers, Penguins. Oh. Didn't get the break on that one. Leaving the six seven split. That's why I saw the last game too, is his ball just it kept creeping more and more high. He got a couple good breaks, but he bowled a he bowled a, a really really good game. Yeah, we were kind of watching back here, and it seems like toward the middle of the game, he just found a way to get the ball to get through the pins. Mm -hmm. I think that was a main difference yeah. in the match. I mean, it was just getting the ball to go through the pins. Yep, that has got a chance. Oh. Oh. Gave it a ride, folks. <laughs> So through two, it looks like Kyle has a two-pin lead with Tim's handicap. If I'm saying that correctly. Tim has a two-pin lead. Or, sorry, Tim has a two-pin lead. Correct. Yeah. I get some calculator, anybody. I got switches going on here. <laughs> microphones going on. I'm trying to read the comments. Yeah, I'm watching the comments over here on my phone. Scott Thomas put so think a Pittsburgh Penguin oh. reference. I think for Tim's sake, I think he needs to make a move. I think that one's a little bit inside, but he's also playing that area where all the friction is. So I think it's definitely time to move for Tim. Let's see if he can spread this up real quick. Well, Lauren, I showed Kyle. He shook his right. head no. What ball did you throw out there? Uh, I threw, well, UC2 was what got me 8-10, and then it got me through the first match. And then to slow it down or smooth it out down lane, I went to an RSTX1. But does both have surface on them? No. No, the UC2 has got, like, just a bunch of gunk on it. And then the UC2 is actually kind of shiny. Doesn't have really much surface. Nope. Yeah, see, Same those are the hits. All, all day. Yeah, those are the hits that I wrapped hand every time last game. <laughs> But he's getting his ball to go through it, and that's because he's being more forward with it, so to get through the pins a lot harder than mine would. So you were, you so, were he was carrying those, and everything you threw would just leave a ten pin. Yeah. Well, I mean, the last Sometimes match. Sometimes those yeah. rubber falls, you know, you gotta <laughs> keep an eye out for them. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you led me into that one. It never fails. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get a double here. Yeah. Oh, 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 o
Hi, dog, you. I think that line definitely clipped up for him, for sure. I was trying to get the mic on Cook, because I, I love to have the mic on him. He <laughs> loves talking to himself. He himself too much. <laughs> That I would, would be, love to hear the voices in his head. Oh my god, that would be a show besides itself, man. That would be funny. Scott Thomas asked a question in here if you'd like to explain. Rick. Yo, what's up? Um, if you can hear me. Once he said for the folks Scott that are out there watching, folks, when hear the what term is clipped? the term cliff? So cliff means that when the lanes are super, it's called wet dry, but we call them cliffed. Now what that means is there's a That's bunch what the of... cool kids say now. Yeah, Back in my day, cliff, it was wet dry. Um, wet dry. Or just slop um, but the right side of the lane is pretty dry and then the left and then the left where the hold is it's very slick so there's no really happy medium um, so that's why most of the time some house shots get really really cliffed so they have a bunch of friction to the right a lot of people throw stronger stuff and then when you move left your ball actually doesn't hook so for everybody that is wondering out there <laughs> Scott During Rick's explanation, Tim's ball is falling hard off the cliff on both lanes. He left yeah. a split over there on the right lane. And yeah, I think he's, he looks like he's getting trapped now. Yep. Mm -hmm. He was playing the dry, and it was just, it was, he was able to get his ball to lay off, and now it's over hooking. I, my opinion, he probably should go move in and get to a stronger ball, it looks like. Well, the ball, the it looks like it's a redemption, redemption pearl. pearl. Yep. So it's it's got some shine to it. And it could nice be one spare. of those things where if he moves in, it just doesn't doesn't want to make the turn kind of thing. But it's a good spare there. Didn't know that. Yeah, it's uh, we see it a bunch of times on like cow shots or even like longer patterns where they get kind of cliffed. Um, now it can bring the scores up because you can just kind of it's again it's what all the I guess the cool kids Brad they say is what we call the shim. Um, oh, when they're cliff like that, you can actually use the shim or the hold in the middle part of the lane to kind of play like old school fallback, which I'm really good at. I know Kyle's really good at. Uh, That's kind of what we saw earlier today. Mm -hmm. is you you started out said you had a little fry out there. But mm -hmm. You actually moved right and actually played the shim. And yeah, I actually shot, I literally like said, just shot 800 I, for the last three. Yeah, I told Kyle. Kyle's a good friend of mine, and I told him literally, I'm just trying to throw it at the three pin and hit the hit the grips. So the carries, it carries. Um, but I wasn't trying to do anything crazy. I was trying to hook the ball way too much the first couple games. First game and a half. So. Well, after Kyle rolled the two pin forward, he jumped over here on the right lane and left a solid nine. Covers up the spare. So I'm going to stay corrected. I think the right lane hooks more. <laughs> Shows why I'm sitting here with you guys and he is bowling. <laughs> well, actually, both of them are bowling. Well, to be fair, I've been sitting here the entire time. You actually got a ball well, extra game or two. Yeah. Oh, look, look at that. that. <laughs> it pins dancing all over that seven. Knock it over. Did you get a cash, Brad? You got a cash, right? I actually right? got a cash. That's right. Brad's got points now. Might have, might have been yeah. a senior yeah. check. I might have cashed. I might hit the senior check. Senior check. What's crazy is all four of us, it was me, Shane, Kyle and Brad all in the same pair, and we yeah. all technically could have had a pop at the top five last game. Could have. Could have, but Brad bowled a good game. Would you end up at the 140, 150? Uh, 150, 150, 150. Well, that explains it. Looks like he kept the same ball. He made a little move in because everything was hooking on him, and the ball just this way. I didn't see that shot. Did he? Oh, he moved in. Dead straight. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. That's what we're talking about, the cliff. There's just a lot of will in the middle, so it's hard to. That's where Kyle's rev rate kind of comes into play too, is he his ball can dig through that um, that oil in the middle of the line. Scott. <laughs> it's 
Scott's a moderator on the page, so <laughs> he's just sitting here. He likes to keep everybody. Oh, boy. When are, everybody that got to the second game had and, trouble the second game. Yeah, I did that last week, too. I had 299 in the first match and then shot 190 in the Century Club myself. So the good news is if I keep this up, keep the same pace, in two weeks I'm going to win this thing. So yeah. <laughs> I finish fourth, third, hopefully second next week, and then first. That's a better ratio than Cook has. Cook, with Tuesday sweeper, he falls in. He wins, finishes last, wins, and finishes last. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to hate to hear that when he comes back and listens to us. I'm going to hear about it, I'm sure. Well, those are the weeks that they block his scores out. Yeah, there's one week his scores were so bad, he got uh, black rectangles for his score. <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty good. You still think that lane's hooking more? Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's watching, no, it, watching all day. It actually looks like what we were talking about with the cliff, as you can see on that shot, so you guys saw it, that was actually more inside of where he left that nine pin at, and that's why the ball kind of floated a little bit, a little more through the front part of the lane, so that's why he switched, light swishered. Um, can't really tell, because of where I'm sitting, I'm sitting behind 21, so I can't really see what he's doing on the left lane, um, but he could be doing the same thing on the left lane, where it's kind of going up the, up the lane a little bit more and playing that hole. That definitely yep. looks more appalling. But low flat 10, it's not too bad yeah, right now. From bowling with Merle, he's definitely more inside of where it was earlier. But it could be, like you said, the, the cliff on the outside, mm -hmm. or they wet dry, it just ball's going over a hook from the outside. Yep. At least this, he has, his ball speed and river, he has actually a chance to strike. And you can attack it one or two ways. You can do it how I did it, where you just kind of go up and at him, um, kind of blend out that hook to the oil with speed, or you can do what Kyle's doing, just play super far left, kind of play the hold, um, hopefully get the 10s out. But cliff lanes are not fun to bowl on. They are quite difficult at times. There you go, Good shot, Tim. Definitely looked like he moved a little further left, but he got it to the right that time. A little further to the right, not too much. Yeah, it's a little better direction on yeah. that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's, you're literally talking one or two boards to the right, yeah. and it just gets balls in cover. And that's, that's, that's that cliff you're talking yep. about. And that's why the cliff is so difficult. Because if you manage a good game, you're doing what Kyle's doing, catching a couple doubles, a couple nine counts. Um, and if you don't have the cliff, it's kind of what Tim's seeing, where he just... You know, he splits and then he moves and they light five pins and that kind of stuff. Good double there for Tim. Put a little pressure on uh, Cookie Monster there. Yeah, that gives him a max of 198 on the scoreboard with his sticks. Uh, Kyle's pacing 218 right now, but he's going to have to stay clean here. I guess that's the best way to stay clean, isn't it? That is. One thing I did beat him today at spares, I know that. He didn't have a lot of spares after today. Well, well, Brad, he didn't have a whole lot of opportunities for spares. <laughs> yeah, Kyle made two spares all night Well, before this. <laughs> He's made some more spares in this game than he did the first four <laughs> games. He threw 41 strikes. Oh, you got the breakdown there? Nice. Yeah, 41, 41 strikes out of what? Spares. Tim Kobe threw 34 strikes tonight. That's a lot. Rick McCormick, 36. I threw a lot. That was all the last three. <laughs> Redbridge is 31 no. Nine spares. I, you could definitely go flush on that lane. Just knock the eyes out of it one yeah, time. Yeah, gives you the breakdown on spares. It's awesome. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Forty-one strikes in four games, though. <laughs> it's pretty insane. And there's a couple ten frames he only had got the opportunity to throw once. Like well, he, he opened one ten frame. Ten frame, yeah. He, I think he only struck out one ten frame. <laughs> and still, and still got to eleven twenty-one. That's what we were just talking about. So Kyle, actually, for the fans that we were talking about, Clift was 
he said he doesn't think he can go flush in that lane. And I told him to knock the eyes out of it, which means just hit the bejeebus out of it at the bottom. And he geared down a little bit, and he nine pinned. So even if he geared down a little bit when they're close like that, the ball will hook. Hook! Should have hollered Shim. Oh, yeah. Shim! Shim right. daddy! <laughs> Kyle finishes 227. Again, Tim Kobe's max here is 198 with his handicap. Kyle's going to be the champion. Let's hopefully see if Tim can finish out strong here. Roll that. I couldn't see it because Kyle was in the way. It's a well, large that, man. That 227 is going to put not a your 280 out. average for the day. Yeah, I know. What's Now you only went 350 over for five. You are you're terrible. All I know is my last game here today was higher than your last game. Yeah. You talked five more games in the booth than I did. See, he's always got these savage comments coming back at him, man. I'll be sure to shout that out in the post. <laughs> All right, Tim Kobe. Good finish by Tim. 177. Excellent showing tonight, Tim. Uh, congratulations on your second place this evening. Congratulations to our champion, Kyle Cook. Uh, big shout out to our sponsors once again: Evanite Bowling, Bolify, and Wellman Construction. Um, appreciate everybody watching. We will be live twice over the weekend. Senior Sweeper on Sunday morning. Uh, bowling starts at 11 o'clock. Our TMT Bowling Sunday Sweeper begins at 6 o'clock in the evening. Um, so we got a we got a full day on tap for you Sunday here at Cole Rainbow. Uh, contact yeah, me if you have any questions, <laughs> and we will look forward to seeing you over the weekend. Everybody have a great night. Bye-bye. Have a good night.